evening and welcome to Cliffy Land's Global Cooking Challenge. Uh, tonight, as we continue to work our way in alphabetical order in our four year long Learn to Cook Challenge, as we cook alphabetically from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe. Tonight is week and country number 183 of 193, and tonight we're up to the United Arab Emirates. And uh, tonight we're going to be making a sak, samak magali, uh, which is a uh, fried fish with a muhammar, which is a spiced rice. Uh, we are simulcasting on uh, both Periscope and Twitter. If you'd care to join us on one side or the other, the conversation is mostly on uh, Meerkat. And the uh, bird's eye view is uh, going to be on uh, Periscope. Uh... Amido, thank you for the like. Uh, da, da, da. In case you're wondering, the United Arab Emirates is going to be very tiny. It's on the Arabian Peninsula, uh, right about there. Uh, you're probably more familiar with Abu Dhabi and Dubai, which are two of the seven emirates. Uh, hello, Lavender Femchi. Thank you for the like in the restream. Also, uh, on the globe. Hello. Uh, we found you right, right there. So this right here is United Arab Emirates. It's uh, bordered by Oman and Saudi Arabia and uh, Bahrain over here and across the Arabian Sea, Iran. And uh, also shares um, maritime borders with Kuwait over here also. So uh, let me get everything situated here. Flip my camera around uh, for the uh, meerkatters. Hello, there's my big noggin. Uh, Sylvan, uh, Nashwan, Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for the uh, like there. Hello. Uh, now let me flip uh, the Periscope people around. Ooh, I totally forgot my stand. How's everybody doing? Be right back, Periscope people. Okay, we are. We tried vainly to find the uh, music of uh, United Arab Emirates and uh, kind of came up short a little bit. I'm putting this back in the fridge, incidentally. It has been marinated for two hours, so it's been in there for a little while already. Um, so hopefully I'll see your comments. Uh, it's, um, I like food. Yes, well, who doesn't? Okay, so while we do that, let's see your cooking. Okay, we're going to get started on the preparation for the muhammar. And uh, to do that, I need to get out the basmati rice. I'm going to soak that, and it's going to be about two cups of the rice. So, we've got a bowl right there. I'm going to get our rice out. And looking for two cups of this. That's one, and that's two. The soaking it lets it cook faster, too. So, uh, this is going to be with the room temperature water uh, that we're going to throw in here so we'll do that. Everything incidentally is on the blog. You'll find it at cliffyland.com. You can find uh, pictures, links to the original recipes, links to the videos, information about the countries, uh, pictures of everything how it went, and uh, reviews and information about the country. And you can find that again at cliffyland.com. You can follow on Facebook, on Instagram, on Pinterest, on Tumblr, and now on YouTube. I am Turkish. Uh, I, I ate Turkish kebab. Uh, we made uh, for Turkey a few weeks ago a uh, grilled meat, I believe, which was very, very good. It was very good. Um, it was one of our better. Uh, I, I, I love eating grilled meats, and when they're good, they're very good. However, where I live in Florida, here, is a very tricky because the weather is nice until I go outside and try to cook. And then it gets ugly. It always decides to rain the minute I decide to go outside. Uh, Salam alaikum to you too. So we are uh, going to soak our rice here. I'll take a picture of this here. Soaking our rice. And that's going to soak for about 15 minutes uh, or so. So let me put that aside over here. Now that bizarre spice mix is very important to the fish. Uh, the bizarre spice mix, is, uh, I had made it back when I cooked Libya. It's a very common spice throughout the Middle East. Uh, so if you go to cliffyland.com and search for the Libya post, you'll find 
the recipe for the bizarre spice mix if you can't find it locally it's better to make it yourself uh, that uses uh, turmeric uh, caraway powder coriander powder Arabic and Arabic 7 spice which is itself a spice mix and the Arabic 7 spice contains black pepper paprika ground cumin ground coriander ground cloves ground nutmeg ground cinnamon and ground cardamom so that is what is makes up the bizarre spice mix that's cooking in with the uh, soaking the the fish in the fridge right now so now we're going to get out a couple of our spices for our rice and we're going to get out our cardamom we're going to need to get seeds uh, I'm kind of uh, winging it in terms of the quantities on this one because the recipe is much more look at Periscope hello oh hi there you are hi Emily I saw your uh, your per a little bit of your Periscope earlier one two three four five so I get to see who I'm dealing with uh, and you're handy if you're on, on Meerkat you oh mom man to make, make it on hi mom what did you say Oh, no, I didn't say anything. I just, I saw you there. I was very much in a hurry when I, when I saw you. So I apologize, I didn't, but I wasn't, I didn't see you live. You were already over by the time I clicked on. Okay, so we have our cardamom seed, cardamom pods. These are green cardamom pods. And uh, so we're going to get the seeds out of here. Now, technically it said five seeds. And uh, I love the taste of cardamom. So I say screw it. I am doing the seeds of five pods, which may be way too much. But uh, I'm going to find out if that's a big mistake. Because last time this happened, I said screw it, and it came out quite well. So, uh, I've had these, car and I'm trying to get through these green cardamom pods also, since they come in rather big. Uh, yes, what did I say on per Periscope Brother? Yeah, yes, what, I didn't say anything on Periscope. That's what I was trying to say Emily uh, hello thank you for the hearts but I, I usually can't see the one the problems with Periscope is if I'm not looking over my shoulder I miss the comment uh, which is one of the side effects of that so yeah the cardamom is just such a great flavor and uh, great aroma and so that is going to give us uh, the great scent that we need for this rice dish, the mohamar. Or mohamar. No, I think it's mohamar. But maybe I'm wrong. There are no, there are no pronunciation guides when I'm seeing this printed. So I've got my, uh, which one is more accurate? Oh, you mean, uh, Periscope is, uh, to the time, is like now. So if you're to go in now, I would see you now. On uh, Meerkat, if you say something now, I see it in, or if I say something now, you see it in 30 seconds or more. So it's weird. Okay, next uh, we're going to get out our saffron. We have, uh, I bought more saffron. Saffron is not inexpensive, uh, but it is good. And. Uh, <laughs> it's a good thing I bought more because I used all of it last time. Aha! So we have Mediterranean red saffron right here. Not much. Uh, but you know what? Let's toast that sucker. Uh, so we have the time. So give me one second here. I'm going to get out. Ah! Pan. And we're gonna toast that saffron. Hey, Yolanda! Um, as we saw, uh, if you've been watching, uh, back when I cooked Spain uh, a couple months ago, uh, I learned the trick about smoking the paprika, I mean the um, saffron, toasting the saffron. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm going to take the saffron, which is basically all of it, uh, okay, Yusuf, don't bother people on my stream, you got one warning, 
Okay. So we've got our little pouch here that we've made for our saffron, and now we're going to fold that over and toast it. Uh, hey, D! Oh my God, D skills! It is it's old home week here. How you doing, my man? Long time no see. How has it been rocking? Good seeing ya. You gotta reattempt the blob. I think we can defeat it. <laughs> uh, she's uh, Yolanda's referring to a dish uh, that I made uh, or tried to make for Sao Tome and Principe, uh, which was cassava flour. It would have been a mush. I, um, it was a combination of mistakes that I made that I now, having made that huge mistake, I know what I did. Um, I used the uh, cassava starch instead of cassava flour, and my temperatures weren't right on the water. D skills into his house. Screenshot. Ah. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yes, Periscope is more on time. Okay. Good to see you. So, I'm going to take this, and uh, you're not going to be seeing it, because uh, just, it's just going to go on the stove for one second. Um, on, the, uh, on the skillet for about a minute or so, uh, just to toast it, and then I'm going to take it off and put it in here. Thank you for the hearts. So again, we're using basmati rice, despite what the box says here. And just a few more seconds, and then we will be back. Hey, hearts galore, yay. Okay, that's probably enough. So, now this is toasted. I'm going to set this aside, because that's all going to wind up going in the rice. Uh, it's supposed to be a half a teaspoon, and that's that's all that came in there. So that was me. Good for you. Yay. Uh, okay, and ghee. So ghee is clarified butter. It is uh, common to all uh, food, in, especially in South Asia, India, and environs. Uh, there's a lot of influence uh, of Indian food in the UAE. Um, well, uh, but you can actually make your own clarified butter. In, um, again, this whole thing is a project of me learning to cook from starting from nothing four years ago to now having done 182 other countries. Trader Joe's, uh, yes, yes, it's from Trader Joe's, indeed. Um, it's handy that they have it. Um, I made my own clarified butter when I cooked, uh, I believe it was Eritrea. Uh, they do a thing in, um, they, you cook it and they put, uh, scent, very scented, um, uh, spices into it and it, uh, it takes on its own flavor, uh, with the, uh, version from Eritrea. Um, you can make that yourself. Again, everything is at the blog. You can look it up at cliffyland.com, but we're going to set out our, uh, fats here with our ghee about two tablespoons worth. Uh, incidentally, the ghee does not have to be refrigerated. Uh, I know there's a, actually there's a whole debate uh, that I've just been seeing online about people discussing whether butter needs to be refrigerated. And uh, some people are like, of course it does. And um, the answer is, it doesn't have to be refrigerated if you go through it rather quickly. Uh, but with ghee, it doesn't have to be refrigerated at all. So now you know. That's a lot easier when it's not, because I couldn't do this if it was refrigerated. It'd be hard as a rock, which has happened before. But you know, this whole thing is a learning experience for me as much as it is for anybody else. So let me get last bits out of there. Alrighty, and uh, then we're gonna peel a slice of onion, and that's gonna be it. You froze on meerkat. Meerkat froze. Like my face. What happens when you force quit the app and come back? Uh, because you wrote that. I'm assuming you're able to see the comments. Hearts for days. Oh yes, thank you. Okay, so we have our. So it's all very creamy. Like that. Yeah. And now we're going to peel and slice an onion. 
always the most exciting portion of the evening. And just bop me an onion. So onion going to go here, fresh going to go there, and away we go. Yeah, you had, I had to quit and come back. You're fine. Okay, good. Yeah, um, when I would do um, the voice recognition on, uh, to do comments on, like when I'm Meer on Meerkat, uh, as soon as I did that, the whole thing would freeze. So I would have to dictate a comment and then force quit and then come back every single time which is kind of irritating. So there really isn't uh, too much to this. This is um, uh, looking for dishes for the UAE has been, we're good now. Uh, it's on my end though. Okay. Anthony Gilmore. Hey, thank you for liking the restream. Oh, like a knife and fork. Spinning emoji. Um, finding dishes for the UAE was difficult and hard at the same time. And as we approach the end of the line here, uh, this happens more and more because we've already cooked all the neighbors countries and uh, The food of everyone's neighbors is kind of like their food, too. Hello Anthony uh, again with the emoji issues on meerkat uh, uh, So the dishes are very similar to those of Saudi Arabia and Qatar and Oman and Bahrain so uh, we have this issue where Oh, the most common things I've done already, and I don't want to have to do them again. So the uh, machbus, uh, which is a, a rice dish, did that already. Uh, biryani, I am almost certain uh, that I did already. Thank you for the uh, like, uh, Yolanda and David. Um, so, uh, it, again, it was difficult finding stuff. And finding camel meat is very difficult indeed. Uh, that's quite a thing. Uh, camel meat. However, it isn't a thing here, so I wouldn't be able to find that. In fact, I couldn't even find, you know, I couldn't find the fish I was looking for. Uh, which is fine. You know, sustainability is important. Better to get it locally anyway. So, we have mahi-mahi in place of a sea bream or mackerel. Uh, in fact, the, the guy at the fishmonger hadn't, hadn't even heard of sea bream, didn't know what it was. It's a... Uh, from the Mediterranean and thereabouts on Periscope. I think I'm going live after this on Periscope. Okie dokie. Uh, hello. Welcome. We are cooking the food of the UAE of United Arab Emirates. Uh, we're doing two dishes. Uh, samak mag... mag, mag oh, one more time. Samak magali or samak magali, uh, uh, which is a fried fish that is being marinated right now in the fridge. And we are also cooking uh, a muhammar I uh, hope I'm pronouncing that properly, which is a uh, spiced rice dish. And this is my four year long learn to cook uh, journey doing the food of one country a week around the world if you would uh, need to fold the clothes. Yes. Um, follow on YouTube. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. <clears throat> that would be really groovy. Try, I'm going to be expanding that in the coming weeks. Uh, I am looking to, uh, in phase two of this challenge, see you later, Emily. Um, uh, in phase two of this challenge, which will come after we finish Zimbabwe, and uh, do a big Puerto Rican hoedown, and a uh, few territories, and disputed states. And then we'll embark on phase two, which will be, uh, after some time off, because taking a vacation, uh, we'll be coming back and we'll be doing more videos less writing, less, less, less written blogging, more, more short videos, uh, so you don't have to sit here and watch two hours. You'll be able to just see, you know, just a couple minutes on YouTube, and we'll post those to the blog also. So it's going to be more video-centric and, uh, and less time-intensive. Uh, but we'll be blogging here on Meerkat as long as Meerkat will have us, and i uh, going to try to keep going on Periscope uh, at the same time. Uh, Periscope is kind of hit, hit or miss for a few, few reasons, but it uh, certainly does have a larger uh, viewership. So, overall. So we've uh, chopped up onion. That's really the only other prep that we have to do for this rice dish. It's really kind of ridiculously simple. 
uh, for night two, which is going to be Tuesday. So we're not cooking on Sunday. Um, we have a big anniversary on Sunday. 25 years. Woohoo! We're officially silver. Yeah, so we have a big anniversary on on, uh, eh, on Sunday, so we won't, I won't be cooking then. Uh, but Tuesday we'll be back and we'll be doing a dish that's a good deal more involved. What am I cooking for Zimbabwe? I have not decided yet. Uh, I tend to not officially decide until the week of. So, uh, but yes, uh, Zimbabwe being last, it will be, I will have officially done everybody else. So, in fact, on YouTube, I just had somebody uh, comment on my Uganda video uh, when I was cooking the food of Kenya, and I felt sorry to tell her. I says, oh, I just did that. Um, I mean, I didn't just do it, but I did it before uh, streaming. So I pointed her to the blog. But um, Zimbabwe is in the same neighborhood, so I do regional dishes. Uh, 25 years together, that is fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you, Lavender Femchi. We're so old. We're so old. Hold on, I'm cleaning up. Be right back. It is 6.30, almost, and this entire other process for the rice looks like it takes roughly about an hour total, start to finish. Well, actually, no, less than that, because I've already started with this business. Um, so it's going to be interesting, the timing of this whole thing. Thankfully, fish cooks very quickly, so there's that. But I'm going to move the Periscope people to over the stove so you can see from the bird's eye view what's happening. Well, we're looking for uh, slogans uh, for phase two of the challenge. Working on a few. Have to decide one. Getting on graphics and all that uh, are ducks in a row. So, uh, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? Um, we're moving over to the other side. So you're, uh, you wait here, and you are going to go for a little ride. Whee! Into the air you go. That's my big face. That's the ice machine. Okay. And we're going to not be so close up. And into the sky. Sorry if you're getting dizzy. But you get a better view that way. Roar. Rot bar. Yes? No. No, sorry. Upside down, fixing. You and you. Okay, now we got it. Make sure you don't fall. Bah. Okay, stay. Alrighty. Uh, uh, Griffy is a longer settle, so your dating time or your just. Uh, uh, it's a lot longer you're dating time or just the time you're married. Uh, well, but, uh, uh, 25 years is your question. It, since, uh, since we got together as a couple, um, we got married. Uh, we couldn't have gotten married 25 years ago. Um, so um, so, that, so that's, that's the date. Hope that answers your question. Moving on. Here. I need to get me a saucepan uh, and lose that lid. You go right there. And here's where we're going to do our rice. You can see there. Okay. You can see there. Good. And our rice still has a few more. No, uh, we can drain our rice now, actually. So let's do that. In colander, rice draining. Okay, this is going to go. Okay, so we have our rice ready to go over there. Uh, catch you later, Cliffy. Thank you for coming by, Anthony. And uh, my big skillet. Hey, why don't you sit in there? It's comfy. Alrighty, so now uh, in here we need to put in uh, five cups of water into here. So here we go. Yeah, that's good. 
that's two. That's four. Uh, we're doing half of the recipe of this one. I decided I'd cut the uh, things that were volume in half and the things that were flavor I would leave as, as is. Uh, thank you for the uh, retreat, whoever that was. Uh, and water. So I'm gonna bring this to a boil and there's gonna be an interesting element here. And now it's curious, this is for UAE, United Arab Emirates. Um, they're located in you know particular place on the planet. Uh, in Central Asia, this would normally be this type of thing would normally use pomegranate molasses. Uh, however, uh, the instructions here were just for plain old uh, molasses. So. Uh, I think I can zoom you in a little here. Okay, so that's what's gonna go in this boiling water and it's gonna have to dissolve. And we're gonna be doing, uh, what is it, about a quarter cup of the molasses in there. So it's gonna get very sticky very quickly. As I said before, same goes for molasses, it goes for syrup. If you're in the same room with a bottle of, mol of molasses or syrup, if you look at it, your hands will get sticky. You don't have to touch it, just your hands. I bet your hands are sticky now, see? See, too late. Okay, so I need half a cup of this. And uh, since it is indeed so sticky, I'm gonna try to do this this way. Uh, like I said, the music of the UA thing was difficult to find. Whew. It's syrupy, it's sugary, it's sweet, it's molasses. Okay, you stay there. Alrighty. Uh, uh, who are you looking at here? Shemokurdi, uh, hello, greetings. So uh, I need to get my camera going over here. Ah! I bet you know what just happened. Molasses goes into the uh, water. And we need to let that dissolve. I'm going to sit that there for a minute because someone needs to wash off his hands and his iPad. One moment. That is the thing, I tell you, your hands will get sticky, no matter how hard you try, no matter how careful you get, molasses will get you. So. Clean up on all five. One moment, be right back. We're waiting for that to dissolve in the water. Okay, we're gonna need to get a spoon to help that along. Hello! Uh, Zindan, greetings, salam, salam alaikum, how are you doing? We are dissolved, boiling our water, dissolving our molasses in the water here, and bringing that to a boil, putting our molasses away while we wait for that, and then we're going to move over our prep stuff over here, which is our onions, our ghee, our onions, which you can't really see because the white balance. Uh, the ghee and our cardamom seeds and our saffron which we toasted earlier there that's what's in the envelope and our cardamom seeds 
and like I said, I kept the spice levels at full strength, even though I did half on the uh, liquid and the rice. So, uh, still waiting for that to dissolve. Yes, that's going to wind up in here. Okay. This is a really, uh, it's kind of, I apologize for being embarrassingly simple, uh, but I kind of need it simple because the one on Tuesday is very, very complicated. Uh, I chose a dish for that which is specifically complicated. Uh, it is a Middle Eastern dish, not exclusively uh, one from the UAE, but one that I hope will be really good and it's going to have a whole lot of steps and it may take a long, long, long time. So prepare yourself. Tonight, this is like, easy peasy so uh, once we have that boiling we're gonna add in our cardamom seeds so you are gonna go in right about now cardamom seeds in I need to practice doing this for videos uh, the cardamom seeds the ghee add in the ghee which is two tablespoons in this case. So gooey. Uh, I want to get as much of it as I can. And we'll be getting back to you in a minute. And uh, then the saffron. So we toasted this for, for about a minute or so. So the saffron, gonna crumble it. And we're adding that in. But I need to take a picture of it. Saffron, as my hands burn on the steam. Uh, uh. And then we're gonna add in the drained rice. I'm turning this down some. And we're gonna add in the drained rice. Okay, baby. In you go. We have a runner. The thing about this colander, this stuff just always winds up sticking to the other side. Which stinks. And again, all over the floor. Have I mentioned I have OCD? It's like things like that can drive you nuts. And we still have some here. Come on. I mean, why waste it, right? Uh, Art Magic, thank you uh, for the like and the restream. We are making a Mohamar. Mohamar? Uh, which is a spiced rice dish. So we have water, molasses, which is this, lots of sweetness. Uh, put in cardamom seeds, saffron, and the drained rice. And uh, we're gonna mix that up in here. Yippers, that's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna preheat our oven to a very, very low temperature. We're gonna do 180 degrees Fahrenheit, basically about the lowest that it can be. And that's just gonna be to keep the rice warm while we do uh, the other parts of this. Uh, so, uh, so as I mentioned, uh, we have the uh, fish is in the fridge. The fish, which would be a sea bream, uh, which is a Mediterranean fish, we don't have that, or mackerel, which I wasn't able to get. So I got was mahi mahi. Um, 
dolphin, but when you say dolphin, people think flipper, porpoise, and it's not that. It's a different type of fish that's called dolphin, uh, so they've also called it mahi-mahi just to make life easier. And where we are here in South Florida and Jupiter, it's sort of like the national dish. Uh, I, I joke that it's the national dish. The uh, fried mahi-mahi sandwich with coleslaw, because every restaurant has it. So the fishmongers, the fi they're fishermen right outside, and uh, they come in with uh, uh, grouper, and they come in with uh, the mahi-mahi all the time. So, uh, Michael, it's Michael. I'm seeing names I've not seen in a long time. Hello. Is this like uh, everyone, like they're calling everyone back home on Meerkat? It sort of feels like. I'm seeing people I haven't seen in a long time. I see David Dorian Ross is streaming right now. I wish I could be watching him, but I'm doing this. So if anyone goes over there, tell him I said hi. Um, that I miss seeing his streams. Uh, bit, 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 So while we wait for that to cook, and it should cook in about uh, you know 15 minutes or so, uh, we are going to get the skillet ready uh, because we're going to fry up some onions. Uh, Zana. Uh, Zana, Zano. Greetings, salam alaikum. Uh, okay, we are going to do double duty over here while that cooks. Uh, because I don't know how the timing is going to work out here. We're going to make it work. Uh, in certain parts of the world, you can get caramelized onions. You can buy them pre-caramelized. Uh, restaurants can, because it takes a long time to caramelize onions, more than the one would like. <clears throat> we are going to try to caramelize our own. Uh, hello. Uh, so that's going to be over here in this skillet over here. Uh, periscope sideways. Yes, you can see uh, both uh, portrait mode, I mean um, landscape mode. Let's get those two words confused. It's actually a good thing that I have this to the side, because otherwise we'd be going right into everyone's faces. Uh, so we're going to use sunflower oil here for this as soon as I can grab it because it's hiding in the back. Hiding in the back. Hiding. Where did I put my sunflower oil? Here it is. So sunflower oil can take a higher amount of, a uh, higher level of heat. Uh, good morning to you. Good evening here. It is a, uh, straight there's about 6 p.m. over here. La Win. Greetings. Salam. Uh, so uh, we are making here a mohamar, and over here we're going to be caramelizing the onions. So we're going to try to put in uh, to the skillet over here just enough oil to cover. Uh, actually, this is for the onions, so I only need about two tablespoons. I was uh, getting ahead of myself. I was thinking of the fish. We're going to need the sunflower oil for that too, and a little bit more of it uh, at that. So I'm going to get this skillet heated up for that. And then we're going to caramelize our onions, which we have sitting over here. Here and there. Lighting is really weird. See? There it is. So, where is my, where are my dragons? Uh, or, caramelizing onions too. Oh, you are, wow. It takes, it, I tell you, every recipe in the world will say, oh, you know, three minutes, caramelized onions, like a horse pucky. It takes much longer to car caramelize onions. You know, 10, 15 minutes, some things say 20. So I'm gonna try to hit it with a relatively, relatively low heat so they don't all burn. But uh, here goes nothing. But uh, methinks dinner might be much earlier if the husband gets home soon enough. And I didn't wait long enough. Okay. 
do, 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 and we wait. And we wait. Now, Yolanda, you're in Atlanta, right? You're not outside DC, you're in Atlanta. Just trying to remember where everyone is. If you feel like saying, hey, where you are, if I don't know already, feel free, I'm always curious where people are from. We got time to kill here. Question and answer time. Yes. Yes, yes, okay. Uh, it's been a while since I've been in Atlanta. I, I just started realizing how many years it's been, yow. Now that I think about it. It was the very, like, January 2nd of 1990. I was in Atlanta, that's the last time. So 26 years. And it feels like it was just yesterday. Wow. Yes, I greeted the new decade, and then the next morning I got in a car and drove to Atlanta. Maybe it was January 3rd, because I stopped in Greensboro first. So that was the, the beginning of the 90s for me. And uh, you can see, so again, if you're on Meerkat, you can check out the uh, sky view on Periscope, and if you're on Periscope, you can uh, make sure I don't miss your comments if you write them on Meerkat, although I am trying to look up. You know, I did a dumb mistake last time after I finished the stream on Periscope. I just let it run while we had dinner, so there was like about an hour of people just watching the countertop, which I'm sure was very entertaining. So. I deleted that one, but I'm going to try to get videos out of, out of this to uh, make one or two minute videos for the, uh, for the YouTube and get a little, little theme song or something going, some animation and graphics and make it like, you know, what you would expect on YouTube. Oh, question, uh, Lavender Femme G, silly me, I didn't know you could get married 25 years ago, I didn't know if I maybe found a loophole. No, you couldn't. The uh, first country where you could get married um, was in Denmark, uh, and that was um, in 19, this is, I wanna say 1995. Uh, that was the first country. Uh, and then it's kind of uh, most of Scandinavia, little by little, and then Spain, and then uh, Canada in 2004, and then Massachusetts. Uh, there was a whole thing in the 90s. Uh, if you ever saw the Brady Bunch movie, is that apron available on the Meerkat shop? Good question. No, this t uh, apron comes from the fine folks at the Funky Fairy. You can go to Meerkat Tees, that's Meerkat, T-E-E-S, dot com, uh, or Google the Funky Fairy. Um, they are in London. Uh, they are phenomenal. They're, they send stuff around the world. They can embroider anything with your name. They have um, backpacks and t-shirts for kids and stuffed animals. Um, they have uh, things that have uh, Periscope on them and the Meerkat and the uh, Snapchat and you name it. Instagram, you name it. So they are really great. Uh, tell them Cliffy sent you. Um, they are really wonderful people. So... Uh, and sometimes they're on here, but the time difference uh, between here and there can make things tricky sometimes. But thank you for asking. Uh, but yes, no, in the, if you saw the Brady Bunch movie, there was a reference there to Hawaii at the time. Um, Hawaii would have been the first state, but that kind of stopped. But the people who made that movie didn't quite understand what was going on. So there's this joke in there which no one understands anymore. Uh, but yes, it uh, was officially... Uh, recognized by the uh, federal government for federal benefit purposes in 2013 and had been recognized in D.C. and Maryland. So that's where we met. And uh, so we went back there in 2013 to get married. And um, so technically we've been married for, you know, two and a half years. But we've been together for 25. It's embarrassing I don't know my own gay rights history. Um, it, they don't teach it. So that's kind of um, 
that's not that's not surprising. First time I saw the Times of Harvey Milk, um, I lost my ever loving mind because I lived, I was alive at the time, I was cognizant of the news at the time. Uh, I was not, you know, three years old, and I had no idea what was happening, and I never learned that otherwise, and that really broke my heart. I totally missed the joke. Well, there you go. Yeah, because um, they did nothing like this not that had ever happened in the United States. And then uh, mm, there are reasons that I know every in and out of all of this without getting into too much personal detail. Um, but uh, I know every, you know, every frame of this movie. Uh, but no one, no one had been planning on this happening, except somebody had filed a suit in Hawaii, and the Supreme Court said, "Nope, you have to. It's to make it fair. You have to recognize it." And then they were going to, and then the legislature said, "Oh, what? You know what? We found a loophole. No." So we are boiling our rice over here. We are caramelizing our onions over here. And wait until they're brown and crispy. This could be go on top of the rice. And then we're going to fry the fish. And I'm going to do that in what you're sitting in right now, which is the cast iron skillet. Uh, let's check and see how our rice is doing over here. So uh, let's see how cooked or not cooked it is. been doing a nice job of absorbing the water. It's a long, hard road, but it's a hard road sometimes. I'm glad we were able to marry. Well, I'm glad you were able to get married, too. Um, yeah, it's, it's uh, trust me, it's not over yet. This other business you're seeing happening right now, that's just the opening act. So, it's like a TV series. You think the end of the season has come up, and all of a sudden there's a cliffhanger. It's like, ah, but next, next season... Mmm, mmm, wow, very sweet. That molasses makes it very, very sweet. But I'm telling you something. It's not in the recipe. But it really needs salt. I've been with Deborah for 15 years. Congratulations. Okay, you got a little caramelization happening over here. Mazel tov. Um, not quite appropriate when cooking through the UA. Um, I don't want it to burn. I do want it to caramelize. I don't want it to burn. And to be brown and crispy is the idea. I don't know if I should add salt. I mean, it feels like it needs it. Because there is no salt in this. That was uh, cardamom seed, saffron, ghee and molasses, no. Your oldest daughter, your oldest together gay couple, I know that's fantastic. Uh, thank you, it's funny that uh, some of our friends are, are longer. So when, you know, when we're around them, they're like, oh, yeah, you're. Like they're the seniors, they're like, oh, you're just kids. Like, oh, we've been at 35, it's like, oh, 40. Okay, good for you. because we've known them that long. When we got together, I mean, when we met our friends who are already together themselves, they're like, oh, how long have you been together? And we said, oh, you know, six months. They looked at us and I'm like, yeah, that's nice. Like, as if that was, you know. So. And I think I'm about to uh, witness <laughs> I think I may, from what I saw on Facebook this morning, I may be about to witness our first divorce. <laughs> People who married on a whim don't usually last too long. Just saying. The very Britney Spears, Kim Kardashian kind of situation. So I really want to put rice uh, salt in here. I really do, but I I'm not sure if it's appropriate. It's cooked. I 
think it, I really think it needs salt. I mean, it's so sweet. It's not even funny how sweet this is. I mean, that molasses is, that's not even enough salt. I need salt and pepper, I'm sorry. It didn't say, I'm adding it. I hope that's not an abomination what I just did here. Hasn't absorbed all the water yet, um, but I don't want it to overcook either. Okay, caramelizing onions. They're getting on the crispy side. I don't want them burnt. Okay, let's see if this tastes any different now. Hey Danny, how you doing? It's really a shame we don't have Lydia stream to watch anymore. Hot. Better. But hot. Ow, burning. Down my throat. Ow. Good. Good, good, good. Okay, I need water. Ah, where's my water go? Be right back. Done. UAE, in the house. Home of the Burj Dubai. No, sorry, the Burj Khalifa. In Dubai. The world's tallest building. So I'm uh, turning off the heat on, I'm doing well, thanks, good, uh, on the onions here. And putting them aside. And now I'm going to uh, drain this, uh, seems to be, good it's very rich brown and uh i'm gonna stick that in here and put that in the oven it says drain but there isn't much liquid in here to drain so i i declare that done i find out when he's getting home okay we may find ourselves killing a lot of time here, people. Just, wow! Look at my glasses. I can't see now. Wow, that was fun. Glasses suddenly become useless. Uh, where is my spoon here? So I'm gonna stick this in the oven to keep it warm. And it's gonna get dressed with the caramelized onions and the fish is gonna go on top. So the question is, when should I start in on the fish? Uh, we have a choice to make here. We have a choice to make. Because the fish has been in there for an hour and 15 minutes or so, and I knew this was going to cook faster. I know the rice is going to cook fast. And uh, I don't know if I should do a separate stream for this is not going to be big enough. Yes, it is. Yay. These lily pads, incidentally, work well with uh, hot and cold. They're silicone. Steam facial. Yes, yeah, I can't even see that. There you go. Um, so this is going to go in the oven to keep warm, uh, and I should use this. Okay, open. The uh, stove is at 180, so it's just to keep it warm. So here's the thing. I need to figure out when I should start the fish, because the fish is going to cook very, very quickly. And it kind of matters where, because uh, I don't want the fish to uh, be done. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, it's going to be a while. So here's the thing. Um, I may stop this, 
for about 45 minutes uh, and then come back. Hey, Martina, thank you for liking the restream. And uh, I'm just going to stop this for 45 minutes, uh, put a pin in it, and then uh, start up a second stream that's going to have the fish because the fish needs to marinate longer. He isn't here yet, and I don't want my fish to overcook. So the rice is going to stay warm. Our uh, caramelized onions uh, are here. They're going to sit, and uh, they're going to be. I'm going to put them in the oven to stay warm. Also, that's what the little bowls are for. So let's take care of you. Yes, because there's no sense in me just you just staring at me for 45 minutes. Well, I wait to start cooking the uh, the fish. So the fish went in at quarter six before I started my stream. Uh, hello, Evan. By the way, thank you for the like. Uh, fish went in at quarter six uh, in the marinade, which uh, and one more time, the fried fish is called. Uh, I don't know the pronunciation. Masak magali or no, so samak magali or samak magali. I'm not sure. One one of those. Maybe they're both wrong. Uh, but that is in the fridge in the uh, marinade which is made of lemon juice, crushed garlic, and a bizarre spice mix. And the bizarre spice mix, if you can't find it at a Middle Eastern store in your area, you can make your own. It's very cool. Um, you can find the recipe at cliffyland.com under Libya. Just look for the Libya entry, you'll find it in there. Uh, not too hot the oven, the onions will turn to mush if they get too warm. It's only like 180, I hope that's okay, otherwise I'll just leave them out here. I'm waiting for Martina to answer, since she knows. Um, but in the meanwhile, I'm going to put a small cover on that. The... They're so cute. Um... Uh, yes, the uh, under Libya. You'll find the spice mix uh, under Libya at cliffyland.com. And again, you can follow on Facebook, on Instagram, on Pinterest. And please, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. If I get enough subscribers, I can have a custom URL. I don't have them yet. So just search for Cliffy Land and subscribe. Uh, that's on YouTube. But inside the bizarre spice mix, which is the key ingredient to the fish. That's fine, no warmer. Okay, good. Uh... And uh, the Bizarre Spice Mix contains turmeric, caraway powder, coriander powder, and Arabic 7 Spice. Uh, uh, YouTube. Go to my YouTube channel and subscribe. That would be super groovy. So go to YouTube, find Cliffy Land, and hit subscribe. Uh, then eventually I'll be able to be at YouTube slash Cliffy Land. But I can't until I have 100 subscribers. Uh, this, Libya. Bizarre Spice Mix. Again, is... Turmeric, caraway powder, coriander powder, Arabic 7 spice. Arabic 7 spice, if you can't buy it, is made of black pepper, paprika, ground cumin, ground coriander, ground cloves, ground nutmeg, ground cinnamon, and ground cardamom. You can make your own. It's really great. It, uh, it lasts for a little while. I had mine for a little while, and that's what the fish is in. So it was good that I was able to get another use out of it. I hope it's not too old. So this is uh, where we're at. I can't sit here and just kill time for another 45 minutes, so I'm going to start another stream in 45 minutes, and you'll get to see the fish. So come back then, and meanwhile, go follow on all those things. So you, uh, so come back in 45 minutes, we'll be doing another stream. Uh, so thank you, Periscope people, we'll be back. And for you, uh, we'll be back in about 45 minutes, so come back for then too. And welcome back uh, to part two of tonight's Global Cooking Challenge as we continue with week and country number 183 of 193 countries as, our work our, as we work our way around the world in our four-year alphabetical learn to cook challenge working from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe. Tonight is uh, still night two. Night one, rather, of week 183, and we are cooking uh, samak magali, I hope, or samak magali, which is a fried fish and a mohamar. Uh, this is part two of two. Uh, we have already cooked the rice, and that is in the fridge, but now we're going to get to the fish, and we are simulcasting on Periscope. So here's me. Uh, and if you like the bird's eye view, uh, we'll be on the uh, Periscope doing that. Uh, let me hook you all up right over here. 
So you can see we've got our cast iron skillet there. Gonna heat that up and we're gonna move the fine folks uh, uh, from the periscope over this. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, keep streaming. Hold on. Alrighty. Secure, no, upside down. Hold on, this keeps happening with the periscope. We wanna go this way. Okay. Ah. Hello, greetings. So we have our rice, which has been keeping warm in the fridge, and uh, we've been marinating the chicken in the, uh, rather the rice has been in the oven, the chicken's in the fridge. That would be backwards. There's no chicken. The fish was in the fridge. Chicken with lavender fam cheese. So it's been sitting here in the marinade. Uh, hello, Emily. Uh, so uh, what am I doing? I'm getting my tongs because you're going to uh, fry the fish in the cast iron skillet right there. Where did you go? Uh, I was waiting for the husband to get home, and uh, and it took two hours for the marinade on the fish, so I didn't uh, just hang for an hour. Hello, I missed who that other person was. Hello. Uh, so, here we have our fish, which again would be a sea bream uh, or a mackerel if you were there, but here uh, went with mahi-mahi. Um, dolphin, it's not porpoise, it's not like flipper, it's just dolphin is the name of the fish. Mahi-mahi is a more, you know, for the confusion, that. So this has been sitting in the marinade, which is made of lemon juice, bye. Um, made of lemon juice, uh, crushed garlic, and bizarre spice mix. And the bizarre spice mix, if you're looking for it, it's spelled either B-A-Z-A-R or B-Z-A-A-R, or any other number of variations. And that spice mix, which is key to the fish here, uh, includes turmeric, uh, caraway powder, coriander powder, and Arabic seven spice. I made my own back when I cooked Libya. If you wanna see the recipe, go to cliffyland.com. Did you finish the countries or are you coming to the end? Hey, Ron, good seeing you. Uh, we are nearing the end. This is 183, we have 10 more countries to go, 11 more weeks, and we'll explain that uh, towards the end. Um, uh, I like how you made it clear it wasn't Flipper, LOL. Yes, because anytime somebody says dolphin, they freak out. Um, I, I keep saying mahi-mahi dolphin. It's sort of like the national fish of right here where we live because people are serving it in restaurants all the time, and it's a conversation that every server has all, all day. But anyway, the Bizarre Spice Mix. Recipe is at the Cliffy Land at the blog under Libya. Look for the Libya post and you'll see how I made the spice mix. Uh, the Arabic 7 Spice Mix, which is part of the Bizarre Spice Mix, contains black pepper, paprika, ground cumin, ground coriander, ground cloves, ground nutmeg, ground cinnamon, and ground cardamom. It's a phenomenal spice mix. It'll change your life if you can make it yourself. You'll, uh, hello from Dubai. Greetings. Greetings, Dubai. Uh, I hope I do the food proud. Um, and I hope I got the pronunciation. Samak Magali or Samak Magali. It's, it's one, one combination of those. Okay, so we've warmed up the uh, cast iron here. We're going to put in the uh, sunflower oil enough to cover one centimeter of the bottom. So it's kind of a surprising amount of oil. We're gonna heat that up and it's gonna cook rather quickly. Uh, but our, in, the, in the oven we have our um, muhammar, which is our uh, spiced rice, which we cooked in phase one of this. It's a lot. That is a lot, yes. But that's what it said, one centimeter. So I, I'm going with like one centimeter. Uh, of of the sesame oil to get that uh, not sesame oil sorry hello Mothakan um, yeah I said one centimeter of it in the skillet so that's what we're doing and uh, I apologize to anyone on Periscope if I miss your your things because uh, that stuff flies away on Meerkat it sticks around 
So uh, we are going to fry that up. But the uh, muhammar is a uh, rice mix we did in part one, which is again sitting in the, in the oven right now, keeping warm, which is a basmati rice uh, in, with cardamom, saffron, ghee, uh, and onions, and in uh, cooked in molasses water. And so that's what that is. Hello, thank you for the hearts, yay. Oh my goodness. Okay, so uh, now that that's hot enough, in goes the fish. Okay, it's a big fish. Let's cut that. Spice mix goes away. But fish cooks very quickly. Now we cut slits into the fish uh, before I put in the marinade, uh, which I did even before the first stream. By the way, it's 4 a.m. in Dubai. My goodness, you're either up very early or very late. One of those two. Uh, but Dubai seems amazing. Um, it. They, you know, they built islands that w didn't exist very late. Ah, yes. But they built islands into the water, and they're when the shapes of animals, and some in the shape of, uh, if you look from the sky, like palm, like a giant palm tree, and others is like, uh, I believe it's the globe. You should come. Yes. Uh, I have a friend who just was there, uh, went there for a wedding. They have uh, uh, indoor, indoor snow skiing. In the mall. Have you gone to the mall to do the skiing? Uh, and the giant water park. With the world's, was it the world's highest water slide? It looks very frightening. That's true, yes. Um, it was funny, the, uh, I go every week. Oh wow, that's very cool. Um, I watched the, um, the, I watched The Amazing Race and they were just in Dubai this season. But I also watched the very first season of The Amazing Race Asia, which is just Asian contestants from throughout Asia. And they only went to other places in Asia. But it was really kind of funny when, uh, I think they opened the ticket and they said, oh, now you go to, I think it was Dubai. I think that's where it was. And they were like, oh, I was hoping someplace more exotic. And I was thinking, well, you're from there. To anyone else, it would be far away and exotic. But since you're from there, it's not. So I thought that was kind of funny. So I'm going to try to flip this now. Lost a little bit of it there. I need to make sure that this is cooked properly. Which means I have to taste it, which is not my strong suit. But I am promising myself I'm going to do that. See how it's doing. Stay. Oh my, that is really good. Obviously I'm gonna have to cut that in half. No, I'll still have that in the middle. Like I said, normally this would be um, sea bream. The, at the fishmonger here, they had no idea what sea bream was. I have to look it up and show it to him on the phone. But it's a fish of the Mediterranean. <clears throat> and uh, not here. Greetings, Omed. Omed. Assalamu alaikum. We have our... Uh, now, I had to put in the rice, I put in salt and pepper. It did not suggest it but it was very, very sweet because it's cooked in molasses. Uh, and I, I didn't, I felt it needed sh uh, salt. Uh, as I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, during Ramadan, because of fasting and be having to be able to make it through the day without food, uh, a lot of the food won't have a lot of salt in it uh, because 
you want to be able to last. That's I think that's what I read. I could be wrong. This is not cooked in the middle. I'm gonna have to cut it in half anyway. So here goes. Still needs a little. Thankfully, uh, the um, sunflower oil has a higher smoke point, so um, you can cook at higher temperatures with it, uh, as opposed to like olive oil. Yeah, I know I'm losing part of the fish in the flipping. But I'm gonna get the uh, the rice out because uh, dinner's almost ready. Huh? Dinner's almost ready. That's a nice piece of fish. Uh, in Dubai, in Abu Dhabi, these, you know, glamorous... Uh, hey, Mariana! So good seeing you! Um, but in these glamorous cities with, you know, the, the skyscrapers and everything, uh, as I understand it, it uh, is difficult to find um, traditional dishes there because everything is so international that you'd find Chinese and Italian and French and whatever, you know, and Japanese and Chinese food that not so much with the traditional stuff there. So, um, a friend of mine who went to uh, uh, Dubai was saying, I didn't have any traditional food there. Um, Karwan, uh, hello, greetings. I think our fish is ready. So I'm going to... Taste that one more time. Take a look at it. Yep. Seems seems good. Uh, <laughs> so now we take the fish out of well off the off the heat for one thing. You go there. And now we have uh, I just yeah oh, it's heavier than I thought. Okay, the rice which has been keeping warm, and then the caramelized onions, which have been keeping warm. Hopefully they're not... Yeah, they're okay. So here's how this goes. Uh, we're moving you fine folks to the plating station, which is going to be over here. Yeah, boy. Uh, they're places that have traditional foods, but you don't find them in malls and near hotels. That's, that makes all the sense in the world. I am Puerto Rican, and in Puerto Rico, um, when you're in the tourist district, around the big hotels, finding Puerto Rican food is next to impossible. So, I know how that works. You ask people, they go, well, I have it at home. I don't need to go to a restaurant to have it. Which is, tends to be, and that happens in a lot of countries, too that uh, you won't find the food of the countries in restaurants there, but rather you'll find it in, um, at home. All right, so here's our spiced rice, the Mohammed, or sorry, no, no Mohammar. I apologize, I apologize, Mohammar. Uh, it smells very sweet. I mean, it tastes sweet. I tasted it before I put it in. That's a lot of rice. So we're going to serve the fish on top of that. Now let me try to clean that up so it's vaguely presentable. Again, this is my four-year learn-to-cook challenge by... Yeah, 
Most traditional restaurants are found near the beach. You know the same thing in Puerto Rico. The exact same situation in Puerto Rico. You go to the beach and there you'll find the traditional foods because they catch fresh fish every morning. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Thank you for the tip. Learn something new every day. So we're gonna put our uh, caramelized, ah, don't touch it with your bare hands. The caramelized onions are gonna go on top of this, on top of the rice. Hope I'm not missing any comments on Periscope. And then the fish over here and I need this. This is very heavy. Hot. Where are you going with it? Going over here. Hold on. Carry this big heavy skillet. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. This goes here. I need to cut that. Uh, uh Sherwad, Shervan, uh, greetings. Thank you. Okay, let me cut this in half here. Cause he's not gonna want that much. Okay. It's weird just taking this one giant piece of fish and cutting it. So this is my four year long learn to cook, cook country a week challenge. Uh, wow, I just noticed you're playing Arabic music in the background. Indeed, I am. I try to get uh, traditional uh, music from every country as I go. Which sometimes it gets more difficult than others. I hope I get brownie points for that. Ah. This piece of the fish doesn't want to go. Okay, one person gets fish pieces, the other person gets a nice fish filet. Blame fish with cheese? <laughs> no, not quite. That's not kosher. Ah. All right. So I'm going to put some more of the... Uh, caramelized onions on top of this. Tammy, hey there. Thank you for the like and the restream. And more caramelized onions for you. This is gonna wind up having a, a kind of a surprisingly high level of sweetness. So prepare yourself for that. Because the rice is cooked in uh, molasses water. But I did add salt and pepper, even though it did not say to. Uh, clean off the dish. Is there any spice? Uh, yes, it has the Arabic uh, seven spice home. You got home, yay! Uh, the Arabic seven spice, uh, which is part of the bizarre spice mix, uh, which has so basically there's uh, seven, eight, like about eleven spices in it, which is uh, in the marinade. The fish was in the marinade for two hours. And the uh, and the uh, rice was cooked uh, afterwards. So uh, there you go. So um, now that I have my picture, this still is not clean. Hold on. How many herbs and spices did the colonel have? Wasn't yeah. there eleven? Eleven herbs and spices, colonel. You know, uh, KFC looks the same. Uh, I think you said something about. Did you say that's what you had for lunch? Is that, is that what, I, what I said? I, I, it, it flew away before I could see it. Okay, picture time. Whee. Yes. Wow, that's very cool. Well, I, then I picked the right dish, didn't I? Okay, so there you go. You guys can see right here. I'll give you guys the close-up look again. This is a United Arab Emirates, night one. This is our... Uh, some, I hope I'm getting the pronunciation right. Samak Magali or Samak Magali, which is a fried fish on top of Mohamar, Mohamar which is uh, a spiced rice mix. 
and there is a dish number two, not quite as pretty as the first one. So that is uh, going to be it for night one of UAE. Night two will be on Tuesday. Uh, check in, uh, make sure you follow on uh, cliffyland.com. Uh, you can check out the blogs I'm posted every Wednesday, have pictures, information about the countries, uh, links to the original recipes, uh, videos that you see here uh, in case you want to see something you missed, and uh, inf um, reviews of how everything went and pictures of how everything went uh, along the path. And uh, night two is going to be very involved. It's going to be a long night because it has lots of moving parts. I purposely pick something that's going to be more difficult, so check that. And uh, we'll definitely be there, already followed. That is terrific. And uh, be sure you uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel or go to Facebook, uh, Tumblr, Instagram, Twitter. Just go look for Cliffy Land and subscribe to my YouTube channel. That would be groovy. So thank you for watching uh, Periscope people.